Okay, so moving on to the next, uh, the next question is, um, it's the third section, is about the process. So what is a good pitch process? And some things I've experienced, some issues, just to help fuel a good pitch process, is should agencies pay for pitches? Should they make a contribution? How long should a pitch process be so that an agency and client teams can actually get to know each other properly? Should that be a month, two months, three months, or something completely different? Is there a minimal annual fee that agencies, and here I'm talking about uh, a, a, an advertising pitch probably, or a media pitch, um, that agencies should be prepared to pay for? Um, so, sorry, it should be prepared to pitch for 100,000, 250, 500, 750. There's a limit to, you know, what's that threshold? How do you, obviously that changes slightly between what sort of agency and the size. Should the CEO attend the final pitch if he hasn't been in any of the other meetings. But what we're talking about tonight here is about the future and what would the perfect process look like. So I'm asking people on the panel to talk about different, slightly different experiences. For instance, there was a view um, from Tom Baisley, who can't be here, sadly, because he's got to sort something out with his family tonight, was that his view was that clients should be able to choose an agency on a chemistry meeting plus and the basis of their track record and the team of people and how what their plan for running the business would be most clients would feel that's not enough evidence for me to make a massively important decision so on the agency side i've got neil simpson from the corner vanilla gray from porto novelli and then we've got daryl fielding on the client side and will abbott from hiscox will you please stand up please so I'm going to start with Neil from the corner. I've got to go back this side. Examples of what your really point of view is on the best pitch process and what you're experiencing at the moment. Yeah, OK. Um, so this will go on longer than 60 seconds, but I'm going to try and ignore the flag yeah. anyway. Because yeah. uh, so I've been waiting patiently. Um, I think there's no one process at the moment. We've got a whole variety of different types of processes going on at the moment. So I agree with the point about it could be just a chemistry. We've got a couple of those going on at the moment. I think... It's much harder for agencies to pitch today because you have to show a much wider application to any ideas you present and any thinking. Um, and because of that, I think it's often a lot more expensive. Now, the IPA and ISBAR put um, a piece of research together a few years ago and said, what was the actual cost on average of pitching to an agency? And the actual cost is about 170 grand. And the client expectation of what it cost an agency was 31 on average. Now, there's a discrepancy there, and I think I think there are some clients, and none on the esteem panel over here, who are actually abusing the process to a certain degree, who are seeking ideas at the moment, getting a lot of stuff together, maybe not being transparent, it's been talked about, about their budgets. And actually, at the end of it, agencies are going full tilt at that and coming a cropper at the end of the day. And I think it'd be great if there were maybe some tighter terms or some agreements. And actually, we did find that it didn't always have to be a full-blown pitch but there were different types, such as a chemistry meeting. Um, we had an instance, for example, where we signed NDA. I don't know if a lot of agencies are signing NDAs. I sign two or three a day at the moment. Actually, I just kind of whiz them off. Thank you very much. We had one that I did pause on, which said, um, uh, through this pitch process, all uh, IP is owned by the client at the end of it, regardless of whether you win or whether you don't. So hang on a minute. I mean, I know, you know there are certain things that we will do as an agency and we'll drive on. But that might be one where there has to be a moment where you pause. So I'm being waved at. But perhaps some code of practice now that actually lined things up a little bit where agencies said, no, enough's enough. And clients went, we've got to clean up our house as well. Could help the process or the variety of processes. There you go. Uh, did I'm you sign it? Ask, uh, Sorry, can I just ask, did you sign it? Uh, no, but no, very fairly, a new don't one was sign sent. It. You're given a choice, don't sign it. Yeah, we didn't. And a new one was sent, actually. Good for you. Will, do you want to pick up from that? Um, so I would agree with a lot of the points that you made, Neil, and I think, I think sometimes you think about process, it then gets very rigid. Um, and I think what we always try and do is outline a very clear process, a time frame, an expectation, but then also encourage the agencies to bend the rules a little bit. Um, because it's always the ones that bend the rules a bit more than the others, who ask for a bit more time, who challenge the brief a bit more, who share work when you didn't really ask them to share work, who just get that extra insight, use a bit of initiative, and by the end, they're probably 
understood you and your brand and your challenge and the team <laughs> a bit more. So I think allowing that little bit of flexibility um, and allowing the rules to be bent or broken completely um, within reason um, really helps the mm. overall process and gets better work at the so end. You of encouraged it. that, didn't you? Had a, did a <coughs> you actually we, said. we encouraged that, and well, Neil, you might want to comment later. But yeah, we, we just and just finished the process. So um, in every pitch, we always I think the last slide on any briefing is um, uh, rules are there um, to be uh, rules are for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men, ah. and then leave it to the agency to do with that what they will. Very good, Penella. Yeah, I mean, similar in the sense that actually I think process is quite a dangerous approach. I think certainly from an agency perspective, um, it's better to come at it from a point of view, which is really obvious to say, but what is actually going to, what's going to win? Um, and what's it going to take to win? And what's the end result? So these people want to really work with us. That's, that's the end result. How, how, how much do I want to work with these people? I really want to work with these people. So to get there, I think you have to really assess what the key components are to winning. And in my career so far, and this don't judge me on my creative output on this comment, but I've never seen the creative idea at pitch then translate into the reality of what hits the marketplace. And, and, and it actually, some recent research that I've sort of been looking at on this topic shows that out of 650 companies that were researched or um, asked globally, I think quite US skewed, what's, what do you choose what's going to win? And it's the obvious stuff. It's chemistry, reputation, cultural fit, team workability, um, and something else, I can't remember, but creativity was right down there on the 10th. Tenth point, and I think you have to test the creativity, but actually the process isn't about Maybe judging more creativity. So on the, from PR, I think potentially. But thank mm, yeah. you, Daryl. I'm beginning to realise I'm a bit of an aberration. Um, first of all, um, I've always pitched when I've desperately needed work, so I've generally asked for work, um, and I've run the work that mm. won the pitch. Mm. So that sounds as though it's quite different. Um, the only time where I had a real dilemma between an agency I really liked and the work I really liked, I went in favour of the work and I lived to regret it. So if ever I mm. was in the situation again and I was Choose not desperate for the work, um, I would be more than happy you just to do the work, chemistry and capability the in future. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Team on the panel, anyone like to chip in? Jem. Um, so to, to answer, I suppose to answer the question uh, directly in terms of what makes a great pitch process, I think um, uh, absolute clarity on what what is being asked of the agency. So whether it's a whether it's a, uh, a fictitious brief or or one that's actually real, uh, a dialogue, uh, you know, a, a question and answer around what's actually being asked of the agency. I mean, I work from a for, from a media agency, so. A lot of us is around kind of performance and delivery of um, you know uh, uh, profit back to the business. I know we're all in that game, but you know ours is a little bit more specific to, in that sense. Um, and then an iterative process. I don't. I, th I think often what happens is everyone thinks they know what the brief is, uh, and then there's, a, there's there's fallow gaps between when you actually like then touch base with the client and you actually test out uh, where your thinking is going. If you've been asked a really difficult question, the likelihood is you'll have two or three probable answers before you actually start to hone in on what the, the actual answer is. And if a client can spare the time to talk to you about where you're going and help you course correct, I think they get better work from all the agencies at the end of the process and they can make a better, more informed decision about which one to go for. And I think to also to Lee's point, a process that actually has data in it, so proper um, insight into what the business is doing, how it performs, what levers it can pull to be more profitable, which ones it doesn't want to pull because it can't, what constraints it has. That type of data gets everybody to a better answer to say that you won't give the agency any data because you're worried of, you know, we talked about NDAs, but to not give data in the, in the era that we're in feels like a bit of a fool's errand, really, because yeah. you'll just get a made-up, if it, even if it's a real brief, you'll get a made-up answer. Um, so I think the more data in the process, the better. I find it quite odd that, oh. in some ways, that you choose, you know, someone that you're going to effectively have a relationship, be married to, off of the back of, in some cases, an hour or an hour and a half meeting. I mean, you, you know, I, I think it's much better to actually see how the team works, what are, how do they work together, because you are buying the people, you are buying their thought processes, how they work together, do they know each other? That's never happened to me. 
Um, but it, and, I, and I think that for me is, although it takes more time, it actually you get to have a better idea of who these people are, what are they capable of, and actually interact because you will be interacting with them on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, and that's what you need to see. You need to feel that these are the people who can do that. Hang on. I'm going to ask Philip actually to come in this to hear about the process from a procurement point of view, and then we're going to move on to the next question. Yeah, I mean, the process is is absolutely critical, uh, and I think from from our perspective, or how we how we do it, we really want to give as much flexibility as the project needs. So, I mean, I do a lot of different pitches, so there is not a fixed process, right? So, what we do is really adapted to uh, to what what the agency is doing, what the what the what the brief is, and 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 maybe give a bit more flexibility than what other clients maybe do. I mean, we really are pretty much flexible in it and, and really want to make sure that the, the the agency can come up with good work. Um, one more. I think that's no. one thing I agree with what Will was saying. Next one. As well, I think as an agency, you've got to look for some kind of unfair advantage over on. the course of the process. I think that's part of the test. I've got that's to. how you will would be like to work with. So and, uh, I, I think, think on, the, that on, the, on the point of process, there's, there's two things that I've seen a lot of is people talking about their process which is really boring because everybody's yeah, yeah, fundamentally... It's even boring for us. Same, it's got the same <laughs> process. The other one is showing us in action. Yeah. Right? And, and so I think one of the, the cadence of the kind of meetings we're talking about, whether it's chemistry, all of those different things, exposing how your thinking is progressing by letting the members of the team yeah. talk it through yeah. is really, really important because when the final idea comes out in the pitch, you see where it came from and you understand its genesis. Right? Uh, and and I, I can't speak highly enough of people who allow us to understand what, what you're thinking and why you're thinking, because it invites us in to the way in which you go about solving problems, right? That's really, really important. And just having, you know, the big hitters from the agency on point selling someone else's dream doesn't work, because mm. you can see straight through it. Mm. Um, so, you know, any chance you've got to put the real thinkers and the people who are doing the work you know, down, down at the coalface in front of clients, we'll welcome it, right? Because it's, it's, it's fascinating. And ultimately, it gives you more grip with us because we, we want to be engaged with the people who are going to do the work. J just to build on that, if, if you're, you know, criticizing an idea, seeing how an agency reacts to criticism Absolutely. is really, really important. And it gives, I think, <coughs> the best idea of, of your working relationship going forward. Yeah. Andrew? Yeah, I, th I think we've we've talked a lot about clarity of understanding the actual brief and exactly what. It's That's me! Oh my God, how embarrassing is that? Ten quid. Okay, I owe you ten quid. <laughs> Andrew, carry on. Sorry, you were rudely interrupted by my able assistant. <laughs> Somebody spoke for a long um, minute. <laughs> so we talked a lot about clarity of understanding the actual brief, but in my experience as well, a lot of the time. The winning agency is the one that has delivered delivered against that, but has gone the extra mile. So they may well have may well have uh, met every part of the brief, but they've thought wider and they've, they've thought longer longer term. They've thought shorter term. They've thought how it affects the employees. They've thought how it affects the shareholders. They've, they've thought about it in lots of different ways, which not necessarily was on the brief in the first place. But the guarantee you have to meet the brief first and foremost. Mm. But it's the ones that go the extra mile for me quite often end up winning. Just one thought about uh, the role of procurement in the question about the perfect pitch process. Yeah. And uh, I take my hat off to our representative uh, from, he's from he's Adidas a, he's here. A goodie. But I think he's clearly a goodie. But I think the, the point <laughs> is a, a, a lot of common sense has been spoken here about the process and obviously giving agencies and clients the right form of interaction. I think what we often find though in terms of where procurement sometimes interrupts that perfect process is you will have the inevitable, you are the front runner amongst two agencies. And the process may last two months to three months. Another month and a half on, you're now the preferred candidate, but we're still looking to get to terms. And by the time you eventually prevail, three months after the pitch process ended, that was three months in turn, I think the end result is the team is fatigued. Um, all of the magic and the chemistry that you, you're talking about wanting to get an agenda from the, from the agency team can be at risk of actually just dissipating. And I think that is in a way where procurement and the client do sometimes need to speak as one. And it's yeah. not always the case. Uh, although our colleague here clearly is that a goal? speaking I was gonna, voice. Oh. I was going to say, actually, by the time you get to that point, it's, you know, walk away because the client wants to deal too. By the time you're down to two or, or one, we want the deal too and we'll work with you. Mm. 
and maybe what is even okay. more important in the process, and some ex to some extent, is actually the roles and responsibilities have to be clear between all the parties involved, especially on client side. And I definitely speak also for us, we have to be clear amongst our teams who is really in charge of what and who takes the decision on certain things. And that's maybe also sometimes missing.